Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I got it. That wasn't for me. It was just Christy Brinkley. Thanks for being here very much. Everybody, uh, <laughs> I can't. I mean, the thing about that, I have to go after Rich Trumka and now Christy Brinkley comes on the stage. Oh my God, what a setup. What a setup. Hey, if I could, I've got something to ask for all of you. You know, one time this politician went in front of a bunch of farmers. They were pretty progressive farmers, pretty liberal. And he went up in front of them and he said, hey look, if your farmer's barn had burnt down and you had two barns, would you give him one of your barns so he could store his weed in it? And this one farmer yells out, sure I would. And then he said, listen, if that fire that your neighbor had, his tractor had burned within it, and you had two tractors, would you give him one of your two tractors? And this farmer yells out, sure I would. And then he says to him, if you had two cows, and your farmer's cow had died in that fire, would you give him one of your two cows? And there's silence. And the politician goes up to this farmer and says, man, you'd give him your expensive barn, your expensive tractor, but not a cow? And the farmer says, well, you know, I don't have two barns, I don't have two tractors, but I got two cows. <laughs> and the point of my story is, you've all got something we need. And I know it's valuable, but we need your time. We need your time because somebody said something pretty darn well seven days before the Iowa caucus. That young senator from Illinois, now President Obama, he said seven days before that caucus, in that wonderful speech, our moment is now to repair the world and to heal this nation. I can remember being on the ground in Afghanistan two months after the war began, head of the Navy's anti-terrorism unit in a farmhouse, a couple Navy SEALs, 2 a.m. in the morning, no roof in this farmhouse, windows blowing out, planning a small mission. You looked out the window and you thought, damn, a little bit of repair here and we wouldn't have to be in Afghanistan. You walk around Pennsylvania and you recognize that 98,000 jobs have been lost to China, not because they're better. Man, I've lived for 31 years with the youth of this military, of our nation, the military. Anybody doesn't think our youth aren't great, come aboard an aircraft carrier that I commanded. 5,000 youth, their average age, 19 and a half, and they run a nuclear reactor. Before you get in a plane, they push that button, you don't even ask a question. You just salute them, get in that plane, and off you go. It ain't China that's beating us. It's someone like Congressman Pat Toomey who actually says in his book, buying American is an unfortunate tendency. <laughs> somehow, when he was a congressman, were those people in Washington that somehow forgot us? And I mean us. I've lived with kids off the streets my entire career who just came on in and given an opportunity could be all they could be. But I gotta tell you something. When he voted, and it's now in law, that if you close a factory in America, you fire your employees, you open up a factory with cheap labor in China, and add injury to insult after they export those cheap goods here, if that corporation keeps their profits reinvested in China, they are not taxed. As a result, everybody standing here pays more in taxes than two-thirds of U.S. corporations. 
you pay more in taxes than the majority of Fortune 500 corporations and companies. You think that's freaking fair? No. What I'm asking. And man, this isn't for Joe Sestak. I did everything I wanted to do in life by 1985. All I wanted to do was command a ship at sea. Man, I've had two personal challenges in life. The first, getting someone to marry me. <laughs> Not easy. 46 years old, too much sea time. But then I had my own single child, four years old, and that fickle finger of fate touched us. The same brain cancer at four years old that Ted Kennedy had. She's now nine, going on 22. But I gotta tell you something. I'm up here today, I'm up here today for one reason pay you back. Man, I had a health care plan with three brain operations, chemotherapy and radiation. I got to tell you something. Thank the Lord. Uh-uh. Yes, yes, but you too. I went down for that health care bill. I would have lost my job in a heartbeat to get that through. And my opponent, Congressman Pat Toomey, he now wants to repeal that health care bill. You know, I tell everybody in the military, everybody has health care. Everybody. And we don't do it because we're socialists. We don't do it because we're liberals. I have yet to meet another Navy Admiral who's a liberal. <laughs> On the ground in Afghanistan, you don't have liberals. But I'll tell you this. We bring kids in, they've got health care for productive warriors, healthy warriors. And nobody gets promoted above a certain rank unless you've got at least an associate's degree of we don't promote you. And then you get a pension. I tell everybody, everybody in the military is a Democrat. They just don't realize it. <laughs> and as I end, this is payback to this great nation. Yeah, God saved my daughter, which you all did with that health care bill. This ain't about me. This is about us. This really is about us. To that story I told you, we need your time. We, America, can we beat the Chinese? Oh, yes. yes. And it ain't about that. It's just about a fair opportunity. You know, that lady sitting in New York Harbor means something. Come on in. Like my father was an immigrant, and be all you can be. I thank you for what you did for my family. We need you. Come out and vote. Thank you very much.